Good evening and welcome. Please stand and join in singing our processional hymn, Lead Me, Guide Me. standing and join in singing our alma mater. Good evening. And welcome to the Honors Award Ceremony for the Class of 2024. We welcome all of you here in attendance tonight and also welcome those of you joining our live stream from home. This evening, we gather to celebrate and honor the members of the Class of 2024 who earned honor status during the 2020-2021 academic year. The faculty, staff, and administration of Fairfield Prep are proud of the hard work that these students exhibited to earn honor status and achieve academic excellence. In a year of transition to high school and a year of a variety of learning formats, you all embraced the academic challenge of a high school classroom and achieve academic excellence at its highest level. We are proud of your accomplishments and we are excited to celebrate with you this evening. We will begin this evening with an opening prayer from the director of campus ministry and a father of a prep alum and a current sophomore, Mr. Elliot Gualtieri. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, amen. We gather here this evening to ask God's blessings on these students and their teachers in celebration of their academic achievement during our most recent academic year. Studies are hard, yet the reward is great. We pray this evening for all gathered here and those watching at home that the Spirit of God continue to grant them the gifts of wisdom and understanding. We pray this evening in a special way for the faculty of Fairfield Prep, 
that they may continue to share their knowledge with the gentleness, patience, and concern for their students and for the parents of our students, the first teachers of their children, that their faith and love may be an example to us always. Amen. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. You can be seated. Thank you. It is my pleasure to welcome to the podium our president, Mr. Christian Cashman, to welcome you all and extend his congratulations. Mr. Cashman. Thank you. Good evening, prep faculty, staff, parents, to all with us virtually this evening, and to you, young men of prep. Welcome to our annual Fairfield Prep Honors Awards evening. We gather tonight to honor the remarkable academic excellence and intellectual competence of these distinguished brothers of Fairfield Prep. I know I speak for our dedicated faculty and your parents when I say that we could not be more proud of you this night and we celebrate your achievements with great joy. Heartfelt thanks to our academic dean, Mrs. Napoli, to Mr. Gualtieri, and to our tech support crew, to Mr. D, our student and faculty readers, and all who made this night very special. As we begin this evening's celebration, I just want to offer a brief word on the intersection of honors and becoming men for others. Honors and becoming men for others. Now you prep brothers here tonight have studied well your Jesuit history, and you've learned your Ignatian terms, AMDG, Magis, God in all things, Cura Personalis, and so on, and of course, men and women for others. And we certainly know in our 480-year-old Catholic Jesuit tradition that academic excellence is our hallmark. Prep, in fact, stands among some of the finest Jesuit academic institutions in the nation and our way of educating you is known around the world. But what few people know about St. Ignatius and the Jesuits is our historical disdain and rejection of honors. You may or may not know that Ignatius of Loyola admonished his Jesuits against ambition. In the Constitutions of the Society, he writes, after the example of Christ, a superior should exercise his authority in a spirit of service, desiring not to be served, but to serve. All of these practices remind the Jesuits that their humble call is to service, to truly become men for others. We would all do well to heed this advice of Ignatius. And certainly Ignatius was not saying, don't be excellent, gentlemen. In fact, you are all living proof of that excellence every day here at PrEP. What I am suggesting is that we should remember tonight in our Catholic Jesuit tradition, our honors are finally not for ourselves, but rather they represent and affirm the many excellent ways you are becoming young prep men, men who see your honors and your intellectual excellence as just one more tool you can use to serve a needy world, a world emerging from pandemic that needs you now. That is the spirit of Father Ignatius and of his brother Jesus, that we live not for ourselves, but for those who are most vulnerable, those who suffer, and those who are on the margins. But we do celebrate you tonight. Let us never forget that every gift of yours was granted by the Holy Spirit, ad maiorum de gloriam, for the greater glory of God. Congratulations, men of prep. We could not be more proud of you. Go forth and set the world on fire. Hail prep. I would like to welcome Charles Santa and Pharrell Nivros for two readings and reflections. <clears throat> Brother
Brothers and sisters, listen to words of the book of Sirach. If you wish, my son, you can be wise. If you apply yourself, you can be shrewd. If you are willing to listen, you can learn. If you pay attention, you can be instructed. Stand in the company of the elders. Stay close to whoever is wise. Be eager to hear every discourse. Let no insightful saying escape you. If you see the intelligent, seek them out. Let your feet wear away their doorsteps. Reflect on the law of the Most High and let his commandments be your constant study. Then he will enlighten your mind and make you wise as you desire. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Thanks be to God. A reflection by the very Reverend Peter Hans Kolbenbach, the 29th Superior General of the Society of Jesus on the Goals of Jesuit Education. The pursuit of each student's intellectual development to the full measure of God-given talents rightly remains a prominent goal of Jesuit education. Its aim, however, has never been simply to amass a store of information or preparation for a profession, though these are important in themselves and useful to emerging Christian leaders. The ultimate aim of Jesuit education is rather the full growth of the person, which leads to action. Action, especially that is suffused with the spirit and presence of Jesus Christ, the Son of God, the man for others. This goal of action, based on sound understanding and enlivened by contemplation, urges students to self-discipline and initiative, to integrity and accuracy. At the same time, it judges slipshod of superficial ways of thinking unworthy of the individual and, more importantly, dangerous to the word he or she is called to serve. Thank you. It is my pleasure to welcome to the podium the chair of our theology department, Mr. Corey Malazzo, for a reflection. Good evening. Congratulations to each of you on your academic achievements. They're well earned. This evening I'd like to share a story which comes to us from Ethiopia. You may recognize some of the main characters. Once upon a time, it was long, long ago, when the earth was young, fire, water, truth, and falsehood all lived together in a large hut. They knew each other well. Although they were polite and careful with each other, they stayed out of each other's way. 
Truth and falsehood were usually on opposite sides of the room, and fire avoided water's creeping fingers. One day, they all went hunting together, and their hunting was exceptionally good, a whole herd of cattle. As they were leading the cattle back, Truth spoke. Let's divide the cattle equally, since we all work together. They all agreed, except falsehood, who kept his thoughts to himself, planning how to get more. As they walked along, falsehood fell in next to water. Falsehood whispered to water, look, you and I are stronger than fire and truth. You take care of fire, I'll handle truth, and we'll have lots more between just the two of us. It was decided. Water moved on fire, putting it out in a great hiss of steam. They continued on, with water thinking about what to do with the extra cattle. And falsehood walked next to truth, saying, Look, can you believe what water has done to our warm-hearted friend? We must leave water behind and take the cattle to high ground, where we'll all be safe. So they left the savannah and climbed into the foothills and up the mountainsides. Water stayed with them as long as possible, but had to give up. Water couldn't flow upwards. It tried, but slipped and slid down every time it tried to surge up the mountain rocks. Just truth and falsehood arrived at the mountaintop. Falsehood stood confronting truth and screaming, I am stronger than you. I am the master, and you will be my servant. Truth faced falsehood quietly and then said, No, I will not be your servant ever. They fought and fought, but neither seemed to be able to subdue the other. Finally, exhausted, they called on the wind to hear their complaint and decide who was stronger. Wind thought, but didn't know how to answer. Wind decided to blow through the world and see what others thought about this matter. Some said, one word from falsehood and truth is destroyed. Others said, no, truth can stand against falsehood even when words have been broken and bent. Some said, falsehood is often hidden and lives with everyone and you never know when you'll be tripped up. Look how easy it is to lie a little. Others countered like a small spark in the dark or the grass. Truth, even one person's truth, can change everything and bring it back home. Wind was gone a long, long time, but returned to truth and falsehood. Wind spoke. Falsehood, you are strong, it's true. But the fact is, you rule only in the absence of truth when truth has stopped trying to be heard or speak. This battle isn't over yet. And so, it's been that way ever since. Gentlemen, on which side do you build your hut? You're here this evening because you've been inspired by a combination of nurture and innate desire to learn. You believe in the importance of improving of progressing, of seeking truth. Throughout the last two years, you've been under intense pressure. You've been asked to sacrifice and to go without. Your generation will be remembered for the challenges that you've overcome. I will never forget how you all rose to meet these challenges we all faced and continue to face. And neither will anyone else in this room. You fought against falsehood. You've aligned yourselves with the truth. As you continue on in your prep career, let the words of our school motto remind you of your allegiance. Per fidem ad plenam veritatem. Through faith to full truth. Don't be afraid to admit when you're wrong or need help. It is through humility and faith that we grow. Never stop learning. Never stop improving, and most importantly, never forget how much you're loved. We are so very proud of you all. God love you. God bless.
Thank you, Mr. Malazzo. At this time, we will now read the names of students who achieved one of three honor status for their academic work completed in the 2020-2021 academic year. Honors designations are based on the following. Cum laude, yearly GPA of 3.4 to 3.649. Magna, yearly GPA of 3.65 to 3.899. Summa, yearly GPA of 3.9 or higher. Tim D, principal of Fairfield Prep, will now call students forward to receive their honor certificates, beginning with the cum laude students. Mr. D. Thank you very much. Well, guys, congratulations. Uh, very proud of you and all of your accomplishments. So as I call, uh, as I call your names, if you guys can just uh, stand by your honors designation um, and then walk towards the center aisle, you'll receive an, uh, a letter from Mr. Cashman, shake his hand, and then walk back through the side aisle. So we'll begin, we'll begin here. So the following students earn the honor status of cum laude for their academic work for the 2000, 2001, 2021 academic year with a GPA of 3.400 to 3.649. Ryan Backus, William Kyoto, William Close, Jacob Corver, Hunter Eaton, Andrew Flamini, Nathan Flores, Nicholas Gualtieri. Hao Ifan, Anderson Jara Palayas, Henry Kelly, Patrick Lundergan, Holden Norman, John Pezzamenti. Dustin Ranciato, Frank Sabatos, Lander Sotil, Jonathan Stewart, Conrad Walanowski, Preston Wong. The following students earned the honor status of magna cum laude for their academic work for the 2020-2021 academic year, the GPA of 3.650 to 3.899. Brandon Bonilla. Jack Boyle. Philip Brady. Cooper Callahan. Matthew Cornelius, Kieran Day, Aiden Dennis, El Sheer El Sheik, William Essie. Adrian Fernandez. Griffin Fisher. William Graves. George Holly. Charles Iacono. Liam Kelly. James Lowe. Mao Xinlon. Jaden Mazoper. Gavin McCarthy. James McElwain. Matthew McManus. 
Brendan McMullen. Gabrielle Mildner. Jonathan Morris. William Muir. Christopher Passanante. Stephen Polizzi. Michael Roney. Matthew Samuelson. Charles Santa. Timothy Shanahan. Justin Taman. Cameron Wilcox. The following students earned the honor status of summa cum laude for their academic work for the 2020-2021 academic year with a GPA of 3.900 and higher. Samuel Alvarez. Blake Baxi. Charles Caparino. Kent Costigan. Kyle Elliott. Ethan Farber. Palmer Fermender. Jude Gussum. Matthew Hewitt. Huang Tenkai. John Jordan. Garrett Keane. Philip Martins. Matthew McLeod. William McMahon. Nathan Moore. Brendan Murphy. Matthew Murphy. Pharrell Nivros. William Reedy. Joshua Schumacher. Gavin Toscano. Connor Toll. Luke Trench. Brandon Ukajai. Luke Van Dussen. Rouse Viggles. Hudson Wingate. Gentlemen, congratulations. <laughs> Gentlemen, so again, I want to congratulate you on your, on your hard work during an especially difficult year. We're, we're thrilled to have you all back here together. We're thrilled to have you back together as a class for you experience, the full prep experience uh, beginning this year. So thank you all very much for being here tonight. I wanna leave you with, with two thoughts for tonight. One is to at some point tonight, thank your parents, all right? They have sacrificed for you more than you will ever know. They've done things for you behind the scenes that you will never know about. So at some point tonight, please thank your parents. Well, tonight is, is also a great night. Tomorrow is a new day. So we come back tomorrow stronger, hungrier and better than we are today and ready to achieve more than we achieved today. So thank you all very much and congratulations.
I would like to welcome Nate Moore for our closing prayer. Lord God, your spirit of wisdom fills the earth and teaches us your ways. Look upon these students we celebrate today. Let them enjoy their learning and take delight in new discoveries. Help them to preserve in their studies and give them the desire to learn all things well. Look upon their teachers, mentors, and parents. Let them strive to share their knowledge with gentle patience and endeavor always to bring the truth to eager minds. Grant that all, that all gather here may follow Jesus Christ, the way, the truth, and the life, forever and ever. Amen. Before we end tonight, I just want to offer a couple thank yous. Thank you very much to, to Dan Horseman and our music minister team. Thank you very much. Special thank you to our, to our tech department and our, and our staff here today putting this, uh, putting this on for us here uh, in person and for all of you back at home. So thank you all very much. A special thank you to the, to the prep staff here, including uh, Teresa Sanera Napoli, our academic dean, who joined us this year. Uh, thank you all very, thank you very much for your work in putting this together. Thank you to our parents. Thank you very much for, for, again, for trusting us with your sons to develop him from a 14-year-old boy to an 18-year-old man. We do not take that lightly. We thank you very much for, for giving us that privilege. We thank you for being here tonight, and we look forward to seeing you soon. Students, thank you all very much for being here. Congratulations. Thank you for all of your hard work, and thank you for all of your effort. And most importantly, I want to thank our faculty. So half of our faculty are here now. Half of our faculty will be joining us for our second ceremony at 7 o'clock. But I want to just thank you for your countless hours, for your dedication, for your service, for your relentless energy and relentless pursuit of excellence for these students. So thank you very much. Thank you all very much for joining us this evening in person or at home. We once again extend our congratulations to the students for their hard work during this last academic year. Thank you all for joining us this evening, and we look forward to seeing you all soon. Have a safe night. Good evening. As we go forth, please join in singing our recessional hymn, Go Out, Go Out. Praise the Lord.